Hello everyone and welcome to the 10th episode of Secrets in Dragon Ball Games. Just wanted to thank you all for the insane amount of support on these videos. And without wasting any more time, let's get straight into the video. Tenkaichi 3 has a lot of characters, and I do mean a lot. Over 150 in fact. Considering Tenkaichi 3 is a fighting game, it also has to give each character a losing slash defeated animation. Now, if you ever played Tenkaichi 3, you probably noticed how 95% of the characters reuse one of these three animations. They either fall to their knees and collapse or just face plant straight to the ground. This is in a diss towards the developers. Creating unique animations for 150 plus characters would be a nightmare. Having said all that, they did give us some unique ones. I went over all of the losing poses for each character, and here's what I found. As you'd expect, Yamcha's iconic pose is there. Cyberman's head will pop open once he hits the ground. Peel off machine who just collapses to the back. The Arale one is cute. Rikum also has his iconic pose. They also gave Rikum's pose to a couple of low-level Frieza soldiers. Babidi isn't all that unique, but it has a little animation for his crystal ball. Nova Shenron has a similar pose to Yamcha's for some reason. First and second form cell also have a slightly altered collapsing animation. And then there's General Blue. Oh, it feels kinda nice. Budokai 3 has a strange oddity when it comes to Tien's ultimate move, aka Neo Tribeam. When you launch an ultimate attack in this game, a short button mashing minigame will begin. It's not really a button mashing minigame, more of a timing your input kind of thing. Anyways, if you win it, you proceed with your ultimate attack. But if you lose it, your opponent will either tank it or completely avoid it. Still. In the case of Tien's ultimate attack, if you do fail it, your opponent will tank it rather than avoid it. But here's the strange part. Tien's failed ultimate will deal more damage than his actual fully completed attack. Despite dealing more damage, there are a couple of downsides. Tien will lose some of his HP and collapse to the ground. You will also be fatigued, which leaves you vulnerable to a counterattack. Yeah! A nice little reference to his fight against Semi-Perfect Cell. Although, I have no idea why it deals more damage than his actual fully completed version of the attack. Hey, it's me, Goku! It looks like only a small number of you guys that watch Kadazi's videos are actually subscribed. So please, hit that subscribe button if you enjoy the content. It'll help out a lot! Do it now, or else... As we already know, the Budokai games don't have the character switching mechanic. That's a feature that debuted with the Tenkaichi series. Quite fitting, considering those games support 5v5 team fights. But what if I told you there's a certain Budokai game that was toying around with this mechanic way before any of the Tenkaichi games? Let's talk about Budokai 2, a game that tends to get overshadowed by its more popular successor. I'll never understand why this game never got remastered along with Budokai 1 and 3, but that's besides the point right now. Budokai 2 was the first game to introduce fusions, so you can imagine there was a good amount of experimentation going on while developing it. One of those experiments was character switching, a rather obscure feature that went unnoticed by many of the players. It only works with four characters, Trunks, Goten, Yamcha, and Tien. It works with them because they can do the fusion dance. I know Goku and Vegeta can fuse as well, but it doesn't seem to work with these two. Alright! If you play around with Fusion Capsule and press Square, Triangle, and Cross, you would usually perform a transformation. But if we equip the Fusion Capsule and press those buttons again... Switch! My turn! Yup, it works. Now we're playing as Trunks. And as you can see, we can use all of Trunks' unique moves without any issues. They do share the same health bar though. Everything also works fine with Tien and Yamcha. And we can even continue to perform the fusion dance with the switched character. Fusion! Despite Yamcha being our selected character with the fusion capsule equipped, it also automatically transfers to Tien. Like I said, an obscure feature that went unnoticed by many of the players. I'm curious to hear how many of you knew about it. I don't usually talk about character interactions, but I have to share these. 
Hey, Baldy, what's the meaning of the M on your forehead? Mama's boy! What? What is this? Kind of rich coming from Vegeta. Whoa! You're one big lizard! Lizard? How dare you insult me like that? Just to give some clarification, this is the original version of Kid Goku, not to be confused with GT Goku. Did you know that Solar Flare has the ability to negate super and ultimate attacks? I'm gonna be honest, in my nearly 15 years of playing, I had no idea this was possible. You can cancel out all of rush attacks, like Kid Buu's infamous Mystic Combination. Solar Flare! <laughs> I always thought you had to get all up in your enemy's face for Solar Flare to work. But it looks like I was wrong. Due to Solar Flare's working from a distance, you're actually able to cancel blast attacks, such as Vegeta's Gallic Gun, for example. Solar Flare! Goku's instant Kamehameha, which is arguably one of the hardest attacks to avoid, also falls victim to Solar Flare's might. Almost all of ultimate attacks in BT3 are vulnerable to Solar Flare. For a simple utility move that only consumes one of your skill bars, it's a rather useful technique to have. Solar Flare! I was replaying some of the older DBZ games and noticed Budokai 1 was the only one to feature Cell in his bulked up form. This was the form Cell took up out of desperation while fighting SSJ2 Gohan. Ironically, Cell was the one who mocked Trunks for using it due to major speed and stamina drawbacks the form carries. It's obviously more bulky than his perfect form, but the face, they modeled it to how it looked like in the show. Notice how they emphasized that jawline, surprised more games than feature it. I guess forms like this didn't have much screen time, so there isn't much to go off of in terms of their movesets. But still, it's cool how they implemented it in the very first Budokai game. Let's talk about Budokai 3's fusion mechanics. On top of having those goofy failed fusion forms if you mess up the button inputs, There's also a subtle little detail that's unique to each of the fusion forms. Once you successfully perform the fusion dance, a counter will pop up below your health bar. Once that counter drops to zero, your characters will diffuse. <laughs> Now, depending on what form you're in, that counter will either drain faster or slower. Let's take a look at Gotenks for example. His base form lasts roughly 30 seconds before diffusing. Super Gotenks lasts about 19 to 20 seconds. And Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks is somewhere in the 13 to 14 second range. <laughs> The reason I love this little detail so much is because it's quite accurate to the lore. Individuals who are fused using the fusion dance have a 1 hour time left before they defuse. Although, that applies only to their base forms. If they decide to transform while fused, with each new transformation, that fusion time limit will be greatly reduced. A good example of this is Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta. Speaking of Gogeta, Super Gogeta lasts about 30 seconds, and Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta is roughly 15. No! Going back to Tenkaichi 1, have you ever noticed something odd about Tien's tri-beam attack? Here's how it looks in Tenkaichi 2 for comparison. In Tenkaichi 1, he uses it as an actual beam attack, whereas in 2, he shoots out a square-shaped blast. You can even beam clash it with other super attacks. While in later games, it just negates other attacks and goes straight through them. Now you could argue this was an intentional choice by the devs. Remember that scene when Tien saved Gohan from Super Buu? He did in fact use his tri-beam as an actual beam attack, rather than the version we're used to seeing. So it very well could be a reference to the show. It could also be a case of laziness on the developer's side. Tenkaichi 1 wasn't exactly the most polished game after all. Many super attacks were simple recolors, and tri-beam could be just another one of them. But if it was intentional, then it's definitely a cool nod to a lesser-known version of such an iconic move. 
What's the matter? Here's something a lot of you pointed out in one of my previous videos. In Budokai 3, I went out of bounds to view the spectators, and I saw a lot of familiar faces. Naruto with inverted colors, Luffy, Sanji, and a bunch of characters from the Dragon Ball universe. Those are the ones I noticed while making that video. However, there seems to be quite a few that I didn't mention. Edward and Envy from Full Metal Alchemist, which a lot, and I do mean a lot of you pointed out in the comments. Tenten from Naruto. I didn't watch JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, but I have a feeling this guy is someone from JoJo's. The thing about these cameo characters, they have inverted colors, so it's kind of hard to make them out. Here's a better look at everyone. Maybe you guys can point out even more characters that went unnoticed, but there is one character no one noticed. Arguably, the most important character in the entire arena. At first, I didn't believe it, but it's got to be him. It has to be him. Toribot. Toribot is essentially a self-portrait slash caricature Mr. Toriyama uses to represent himself in his manga illustrations. There are a lot of different designs he uses for Toribot, and that is why I wasn't so sure if that was really him on the world tournament stage. After doing some digging, I believe I found the reference design used for his Budokai 3 cameo. Am I stretching it, or is it actually Toribot? A quick little update, I am planning on making these videos a weekly thing for the next month, as well as maybe making a secrets in Naruto games including the PS2 Ultimate Ninja Classics and some of the Storm games. Let me know what you guys think about that in the comment section below. Anyways, that's all for this one, see you next time. Take that!